okay well look, should we go into the, a little bit more about um the the, the sealant adhesive range and the products that we normally see uh, we've got a lot of products in the uh, range specialists we're going to get into some of them over this webinar but the main ones that we see in the chandleries in the shops um i think our our best selling product is the 750xl uh what what, what does that do for us uh so if you um, if you look at the sub attack range as a whole, you have sealants at, at one end and very, very strong structural adhesives at the other end. Uh, 750XL fits quite well into the middle of the range. Um, it is actually a, a very strong structural adhesive, um, but the the thickness of it is such that it allows you to get a, uh, quite a nice finish with it as well. Easy to apply, not too thick. Um, the XL at the end of the 750 XL relates to, well, it stands for extended life. What that means in practice is it gives you a little bit more working time before it skins over and ultimately before it cures. So if you've got to slightly reposition something, you've got a little bit longer to work with 750 XL. Um, and, and ultimately when it's cured, you get a very, very strong bond to the overwhelming majority of surfaces. So. And I think colour is a question I've got to ask you about this one, isn't it? Yeah, colour uh, is so most of the range is available in black, white and grey. There are some exceptions. 750XL is also available in two brown colours, so a teak and a mahogany colour. Uh, so if you're sealing around the edge of decks, um, though that, that kind of application, it's quite nice to have something which blends in with the timber a little bit more than the traditional black, white and grey. Um, so yeah. And compared to some of the competitors' products out there, um, you know the polyurethanes that we're used to and things like that. Um, how, how, you know, the, the standard products that you buy in the chandlery, strength-wise, where is where does it compare to those? So 750XL is much stronger. Um, it is, as I say, a, a, a bona fide structural adhesive. So um, yeah, it, it's quite a lot stronger than most of the things you find on a chandlery shelf, um, but but still easy to use. So. Fantastic. OK, so jumping uh, across the 720, um, we're doing a lot of that these days as well. Tell us a little bit more about the 720. So 720 um, you'll see is listed as sealing and bonding rather than bonding and sealing. Uh, it, it's traditionally used as part of the range as more of a sealant than an adhesive, but that kind of does it a disservice because it is a you do get a very, very strong bond with with 720 almost as strong as many other chandlery shelf structural adhesives um, but it's slightly thinner so it's slightly easier to work with in terms of getting a finish um, and it's most at home I would say with sealing under deck deck gear and deck fittings hatches those those that, that kind of application certainly above above the waterline I would say as well so so for many years, most of the manufacturers have got rid of them now, but they were using silicons for that job, and and we still see silicons in the in the in the chandelier. So if I remember, the the problem would be is you'd seal a hatch on with a silicon, for instance, and after you'd pressure washed the deck off a few times, it would release the silicon because it's not it's a sealant, not a bonding agent. So will this will this take that sort of pressure washing and general maintenance of the deck? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, it, it you get a, you will get a much much stronger bond, uh, much less likely to break down, and you get the added bonus of um, many people will be aware of the fact that silicon uh, is well, paint particularly doesn't like silicon, and uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's more than compatible with Saba, uh, so you can you you've got an added advantage there as well. So one of the attractions to a silicon, for instance, on the chandlery shelf is that it's cheap. Um, uh, where, where's the sort of cost point of the 720? I would say if you if you're looking at, at competitors products on on a chandlery shelf, it probably sits halfway between a cheap silicon and a structural adhesive somewhere around halfway. Obviously, people charge different prices in different places, but it's, yeah, it's about halfway, I would say. So the sake for a quid or a couple of quid, you've got something that's going to last and 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 bond rather than just seal and, and cause you problems at a later date. OK, yeah, absolutely. And on that point, actually, the 750, I mean, that that that's stronger than its normal competitors. You just talking about. Does that make it more expensive than the, the, the normal adhesive sealants that you see on the on the shelf? 
it isn't actually too much more expensive now it is a little bit um but it, it's not it's not as uh, it's not as expensive as maybe people might think it would be so okay and um, the the last one in the range is the Sealtech 780, and and um and, and we 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 see this occasionally uh, on the shelf um, for specialist bonding and things. Tell us a little bit about that. So 780, the the technology is very similar to the other to the other two products, but it's a uh, what you get is a, a slightly stronger bond when it's when it's fully cured, but you get a slightly higher grab as well. So that that initial strength when you've got a fitting that you're putting on, um, you'll see on the screen that it mentions sealing and and uh, and bonding below the waterline. If you're trying to bond something on overhead or if you you know fitting that's upside down, yeah, that initial grab is really useful. Um, it's also a slightly faster cure, so it doesn't. You'll notice it doesn't have the XL after the 780. Um, but so yeah, you get a slightly slightly faster initial skin time and cure, uh, which can be fairly useful in certain applications. We should say that the 750 is also fine for putting a uh, a, a skin fitting in and things like that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, without getting too technical, the strengths are, uh, are fairly similar. 780 is is slightly stronger, but um, again, if you're of a belt and braces mindset, as I am, uh, then yeah, 780 is is a, a better choice. I would say. Okay. Um, we of course have some ancillary products. I mean, quite often you won't see these on the childhood shelf, but but tell us a little bit about them and what they do. So we've broadly speaking, you've got you've got three products: cleaners, primers, and activators. Uh, the cleaners do exactly what they say. the The main reason you would choose a, a cleaner from the Saba range is because they're specifically formulated to work with the products uh, with the adhesive products, so they don't attack them or hinder the hinder the bond in any way. Um, in most cases, primers aren't required, uh, but there are certain substrates that can be a little trickier. Um, so in certain plastics and metals primers are required um, but we can we can advise on that for specific circumstances um, and, and activators are uh, newer to the market I would say but the idea with an activator and the and the path that they're taking is to go towards being able to clean and prime or pre-treat a surface all in one go um, so it, it keeps the cost down, keeps the labour down, keeps the process simpler. Um, and with all of these products, as we mentioned with the with the big green tick, the aim is to have all of the nasties re removed from these products within the next few years. So, I mean, they're they're, they aren't particularly harmful now, um, but they, uh, the, yeah, the plan is to go to a completely hazard label free uh, product or product line very very soon so okay I think we've just got a, a, a little bit of a, um, a a video here um, uh, take us through this a little bit Rich and what they're doing uh, so you've got a piece of aluminium here uh, you'll notice it the the cleaner first uh, straight onto a onto a rag again usual uh, usual process wiping in one direction so you're not spreading contaminants around but it, it really is just a just a final clean to to remove anything from the surface uh, now onto a primer uh, all the all the guys doing here is just writing the date on so he knows when he's opened the can there will be a certain use by date once you've opened the can but again generally speaking as long as the liquid remains clear you can still use it um, but what you will notice here is he's about to tip out some of the primer into a cup or into a lid before he wipes it on. You'll notice very shortly, uh, you'll see how quickly the, the primer evaporates. So it does actually leave a, a residue on there. Um, and you can see some information there about drying times and open times. Oh, perfect. OK. Um, so um, uh, let's go back to Chris. Have we got any any questions uh, from uh, people out there? Hello. Uh, yeah, we've, we've we've just had one come in so far. Um, there's a lot of ancillary products, uh, the primers and activators and everything. Do you need to use these for things like bolting down fittings or for stuff that have kind of got mechanical fastenings? Is it okay? 
as long as you're as long as you're clean, dry, free of dust, that sort of thing. Certainly, where you've got mechanical fixings in place, you should be okay. Um, you'd obviously take more care if you're bonding something down structurally and you haven't got anything else there. But yeah, most of the time, clean, dry, free of dust, you you're good to go. So the primers are mostly about sticking stuff rather than. Yeah, primers are generally more about sticking stuff. And again, in the overwhelming majority of cases, a primer isn't required. But um, you know, something we'll mention again a little bit later, if you've got a spare piece of material that you're trying to bond, it's worth just running a little test just to check. So. Perfect. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Thanks, guys. That's um, that's perfect.